Good morning YouTube. Welcome back again. This is a second video I'm doing for the day. Uh, it might be the first video I put up. I don't know how editing is going to go. But today I wanted to talk to you about Nepenthes pitcher plants. I get a lot of questions on how to care for these guys. What am I doing wrong? Mine is sick. Mine is dying. Mine isn't pitchering. Well today I wanted to do a video and just cover some of the care on Nepenthes pitcher plants. What you're looking at here is one of my first Nepenthes pitcher plants. I got it probably five years ago, maybe even less. I haven't been them keeping them that long. I don't consider myself an expert on them. This is a Nepenthes sanguinea, and it has done beautifully. I bought this guy as a small little seedling, um, probably out of tissue culture, and it has grown from there into the plant you see beside you. So it normally doesn't hang here, but um, there was a hook and this is working perfectly for filming. So here we are. They have beautiful pictures, good size to them. Um, nice, pretty looking things. They have purpley spots inside. With age, they tend to get a little bit redder almost. Um, and when they come out, they look sort of like this. They're just sort of a fuzzy little thing. Now this is just an extension of a leaf. All this is, this isn't a flower. This is just a modified leaf. And these guys I find very, very easy to care for. I started with these guys as secondary to orchids just because they take the same sort of care as an orchid does. Um, same sort of temperature, same sort of lighting. If you can take care of an orchid, you can take care of one of these guys. Now, just like orchids, they're gonna come in different temperature ranges. So you need to research on Google. You need to find the name of the plant that you um, have in front of you or that you're thinking of buying and make sure you can care for that one appropriately. They are, some are a little bit forgiving. This guy here, for example, he could probably grow on my windowsill. He can grow out here in the greenhouse. He could grow in warmer climates and cooler climates. I give this guy summertime, daytime temperatures are up around 85 Fahrenheit. Um, for you other folks, that's probably 29 Celsius. These guys get winter lows of 52, 53. For you Celsius folks, that's probably 12 or 13. And they love, they're called the Highland Nepenthe. They grow in the mountains in the tropical regions of um, Asia and that. So they love the nighttime drop in temperature. It just, it does them so good. This guy hangs up high. For the wintertime, he hangs up high anyways. They don't need tons of light. You can see from him hanging high, even here in the fall, he's got sort of a red tinge to his leaves. That's okay. In the summertime, I bring him down to a much lower level, sort of at knee or waist height, because he just doesn't need that much light. He's not like a Vanda orchid where he needs tons and tons of, of light. Um, but direct sun isn't bad for them at all, as long as you're not cooking them. I try to grow all my Nepenthes as bright as possible, and I look for this reddening on the leaves to see if they're getting enough light. So lack of light is the number one reason these things don't picture. And as you can see, I think pretty much every leaf for me always pitchers because they, they have the right light. And as a bonus, in the last couple of years, it's actually started growing some, some basil shoots at the bottom. So the plant has turned from one vine, because these are actually a vine, turned from one vine into three. As for the potting media, it is in mainly a sphagnum moss mix. A uh, very easy mix to make up. There's a bit of perlite, a bit of orchid bark in there. Never let the um, plant dry out. Although it's in a hanging pot, it's actually in a pot in the hanging pot. Um, at the time, I, I didn't have room for the hanging pot. So it's living there now, sort of pot in a pot. Um, as for maintenance on these guys, they tend to be really low maintenance. Sometimes the pitchers will dry out. Um, I leave the pitchers on there until I can't stand looking at them anymore. And when you can't stand looking at them, that's the time to cut them off. This guy loses very little leaves. I see there's one dead leaf way deep in there now that I could probably cut off. I don't cut off the leaves until they've gone completely brown. I don't know if you can see that. Can I bring that around? Maybe, there it is, okay. You can see that on camera now. So that leaf I could safely cut off. The other ones that are starting to yellow, they take months and months of slowly yellowing before they actually turn. And there's one pitcher that didn't make it. Usually when the pitchers don't make it, if you know you have enough light, it is going to be a lack of humidity that that makes them not want a pitcher. So I have my trusty spray bottle here, just below you. And what I normally do for these guys while they're growing is this pitcher here, 
I will just spray it with water. And I'm gonna spray that pitcher. And here's another pitcher that's not quite forming yet. And there's another one that's not quite forming. You don't have to soak the whole plant, but I always spray the pitchers that are starting to grow. And it gives them a little bit of extra humidity. There's another one up high. It gives them um, just that little bit of water and it seems to really, really help. There for a while, I wasn't getting many pitchers on there, but as soon as I started spraying them with the, um, this is just um, tap water. And as soon as I started spraying them with that, uh, it really, it was like magic. So if you have a plant that is not pitchering for you, spray it with water. Now, like I say, if you continually spray the plant down and you're drenching it every day or three times a day you could get mold issues you could get if you got water in the crown it could potentially rot you don't need the media becoming super soggy that's why I'm kind of selective and I will spray the pitchers this is much easier to do on a bigger plant like this when you have a little tiny baby plant I'm really hesitant to spray them at least several times a day like I would this because I don't want the crown rot, but you know, when the crown's up here and you're spraying a foot away and you're just getting the tip of the leaf, huge, huge help with um, pitchering. So as for water, as I say, I never let it dry out. Sometimes I will just water it like this. Uh, I just use pure water with it. As for feeding them, they take very little food actually. Um, the odd little earthworm in there or the odd little bug I find around. These guys in the greenhouse will catch their own food as well. If I put them outside, it's amazing. They catch tons of food, tons. If they're in the house, um, a good one would be like frozen bloodworms. It's a fish food that you can get at like a specialty fish store, like aquarium store. They work well for in there. Don't feed them hamburger, nothing like that. Now these guys are a tropical plant. They don't need dormancy. They would love the same exact conditions all year long. They generally grow around the equator and although they're on mountains and they, they get cooler up there, it is, it's the same conditions. They don't have seasons. So they like the same conditions all year long. Um, other things to note, this guy, for example, he's a very hardy plant. He takes the, the very wide range of conditions. Now I'm gonna take you around the greenhouse. We'll do a little tour of the Nepenthes and I'll continue to talk while we um, tour. I'll show you some other ones that are really easy to grow. And then I'll show you some that you should probably avoid until you've at least mastered these guys. Okay, so let's start the tour here with a couple warm growing or lowland Nepenthes. There's two in front of you and both love it warm. And one, as I say, this is where you can pick and choose your Nepenthes to um, suit your conditions better. This first guy here is a Raffle Sienna, beautiful lowland Nepenthes. He likes it warm, very warm. He would love 85 to 95 degrees every day and 70 plus every night. Now, if he doesn't get it, he is going to be okay. He might suffer a little bit, slow down in growth and pout, but he's gonna generally be okay. Here's a new picture about to open as well. He's less fussy than this guy here. Now this is my little Baikal Karata. It's the um, little fanged guy, I love him a lot. This guy, although very easy to grow if you live in the tropics, is very hard to grow here in Canada. He needs it hot, he likes it hot. He will not only pout, but he will suffer if the temperatures go below 70 degrees for very long. So if you're choosing between these two and you're not confident that you can keep the temperatures really hot for this guy, go with the Raffle Sienna there because he's a lot more adaptable than um, the Baikal. So those are, I don't have many um, lowlands. They live in a chamber. They're, they're heated much hotter than the rest of them. But I just want to give two examples that, um, that would potentially work for you. Say if you're growing in an aquarium in the house and you know that it's not going to get below 70 degrees. All right. The other thing to note is hybrids tend to grow faster than species. So this is a hybrid here. This is in the Penthes Miranda. You can see a picture about to open and another picture in the moss and another one here. And all of these pictures down here, they're a good size picture. This is a beautiful plant. It is super easy to grow. This is one that's mass produced. You, you can find it in garden centers and Home Depot and that sort of thing. It's in a big pot. 
all of these little tendrils here, I spray them. I try to spray them daily in order to keep the picturing. Doesn't mean I soak the plant, but I spray the tendrils. It's very humid in here as it is, but I still continue to spray the tendrils to make sure I have good picturing like down here. There is so many pictures down here, they're thick. This one's just opening here, you can see. But there's other ones here that are coming. So I spray them, that is a secret. It's a vining one, it's very tall being it's a hybrid, it grows really, really fast. And there are some upper pitches up there. Here's another example, one that I'll be spraying every time I have the sprayer out, he gets sprayed. It vines along this way as well. Look at this one, it is, it's on a hook, but the hook is movable. See, I just have it on the S hook. It, they twirl around it because they're vines, but, so I just leave him there. Here's a couple more uppers. And you can see they kind of have a dewy nectar on them on the bottom. That's to attract the insects up the rim and so they fall in. And here's the latest one, curling around the shelving. Now, if you live in the house, that pitcher is probably not going to make it. But if you spray it with water, you're going to have a much better chance of having that guy make it. Very easy one. It's called the Nepenthes Miranda. I really recommend it. This guy here was my other first one. I got it at the same time as I got my Sanguiana there that we were just looking at. This is a Ventricosa. Tubby little pictures on it. Cute little things. Good coloring to them. They don't get this big, but that's okay. Um, this guy, he's vining now. He's got a few extra shoots on him. The upper pictures at the back here, much more dainty. Here's one of the new ones that sort of opened. He's a good size for an upper. He's instead of sort of the reddy color, he's a lot more cream. And anyways, the upper pictures get, I just sort of spray up there and get all the tendrils wet. And even down here. Now again, this guy's very hardy. There's a good looking one right there. This guy's very hardy, easy to grow. He could probably grow on a windowsill, a very wide range of temperatures. Same with the Miranda we just looked at. And if we go down here, Behind this stick here, you're going to see some pictures back there. And this is another hybrid. It is my other hybrid that I have that um, is sort of the basic ones I learned with. All of these ones I just I learned with. So this one is a Ventrata. Nice little pictures on them. Very smooth. Nice red colors. The one beside is even more of a green color. And it grows really, really, really fast. This guy sometimes forget to spray with water because he grows so fast anyways. There's some upper pictures. And another one about to form there. He's probably a good seven or eight feet long in many different vines. So I just sort of let him vine around the greenhouse. He's growing in front of the air conditioner now and up. He grows really, really fast. So if you're looking for a fast growing one that's really easy, hard to go wrong with, um, that is a Ventrata. Now if you're growing them in the house, may not pitch it for you because of the lack of humidity. Um, usually when people talk about them not pitching, they say it is due to a lack of light, which is true. But what they don't say, when the light increases, so does the heat. And as the heat increases, like in a sunny window, the humidity plummets. So you have to um, keep them much moister. The brighter they are, the... Um, the moisture they need to be and it seems like other than the media being moist down there it's just the tendrils themselves that need to be moist this little fuzzy guy here if he was um come on focus are you gonna focus he's not gonna focus but he's a, fu a fuzzy tendril i'm not sure why he's not focusing there we go that guy could dry out easily in direct sunlight if the humidity was low but all of those guys that I've showed you so far take a wide range of temperatures and very, very easy to grow. And let's look at a few that maybe um, aren't going to be so easy to grow on a windowsill. This one is a macrophylla or macrophylla. He gets huge, giant plant, giant pitchers. He is a species. He has a, a pretty select um, temperature range he needs. And if it's not met, he will eventually um, sort of slow down and die this guy being a species does not grow feet per year he's going to take years to get big um what else do we have here 
This guy is one of the hardest ones that I find to grow. That is a Velosa. The Penthes Velosa, he doesn't look like much now, but he's going to be very, very toothy. Very, very um, beautiful plant. Very, very select temperature ranges. This guy needs to get down to, I bring him down to about 7 Celsius every night. and Or even a bit colder. And only up to about 75, 80 max in the daytime. And for the most part, although they're out for now because they're under the lights here that aren't on because I'm filming. He lives in my modified freezer over there. So that he he needs it so cold he can't even grow in my Highland greenhouse. He needs it colder. So I have a few Veloces that live in there. They're doing quite well. There's some seedlings. He's growing quite fast for a Velosa, but again, he's not going to grow feet per year. He's going to take years to get big. And over those years, if you mess up once, then um, that can be the end of your plant there. Another one that people like, and I'm going to bring him down because he's hanging. Let's see here. Uh, where can I put him? Right over here. This is an Nepenthes Hamada. They're very toothy, very famous for their teeth. Beautiful plant. Um, it takes normal highland conditions. Uh, you know, I've heard of people growing them on their windowsills. I wouldn't be growing him on my windowsill, but if you have no other choice, it, it has been done. I do, again, spray the pictures as they're developing. I try not to spray the, um, the crown right there as much as I can help it. Keep the, um, the uh, medium moist. But Hamada is a really nice one. And I find, although it looks like it should be really challenging, it, it really doesn't seem to be at all. This plant here I've had for about a year, and it has, it's 10 times bigger than when I got it. Again, not like a hybrid. It's not growing feet per month. But, um, you know, it's got lots of pictures on it. It never misses a picture in here. And the pictures and the leaves keep getting bigger, so it's a good sign. That was why we call a very happy medium um, pretty easy to grow, not super hard to grow at all, but would be more of a challenge if you couldn't get the nighttime temperatures down. The last one I'm going to show you here is Nepenthes bongzo. It's a nice black one almost with a big peristome. And again, very similar conditions to the Hamada. So they're just hanging there. You can see it's quite bright. It's moist up there, but quite bright. And that's where he's going to stay for the winter time. But anyways, that's going to be it for our Nepenthes 101 today. I hope you liked this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.